If you have a dent in your vehicle that you want to repair yourself or you just want to see how the process is done, stay tuned because I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about repairing and painting your dent. We're going to pull out this dent here. I'm going to start by glue pulling this. We'll see what we can do with a glue pull. Um, you know, on this, a good PBR guy could probably get that, I would say 95, maybe all the way out. But what we're gonna do is pull this out today. We'll be repainting this door. I'll show you all that. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is to clean this off with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. We're gonna start with uh, some cold glue. I'm gonna just apply the cold glue right to the center of this dent right here. We'll give it a pull, see what we got. See how much this comes out. All right, that took out quite a bit. Let's see, I don't know if you can tell, but it took out a lot of that. The body line was kind of messed up. So it kind of straightened that. We still have a dent in the center and that big crown. So let's do it right again, right in the center. See what we can do here. Now I am gonna paint this whole door, but I don't wanna blend into the fender or the quarter panel. So we're gonna keep this as small as possible. A couple more pulls. This might not show up real well, but I'm gonna tap down this crown right here. This Cold glue is good for a general for generally pulling out larger dents. Not really so great for small dents. So we call this pull the paint. We're doing the best we can to pull this dent out so we can do a little bit of filler and then paint it. Okay, let's do a glue pull. Well, oh yeah, I pulled that dent out. Let's try this one right here. We can over pull it and then tap it down. So see this one now needs to tap down, but it pulled it out. So there's definitely a little bit of a ding right there in the center. And then there's one right below that body line. So I'm going to tap down this ridge and I think we'll just block this with some 80 with a small block. Keep it small as possible and we'll be able to see, you'll be able to see the low areas and how well it came out with just the glue pulling and a little bit of a knockdown. Yeah, there's a little knockdown that can be done right here. I'm just going to block it. This is 80 grit sandpaper on this block. I'm just going to block it flat. Show you what we got. There we go. Now, when we break through, that's a little high spot. I am going to tap that down. Let's put a little guide coat on it. Let's see, guide coat's not even, it won't even go in that little ding. High spots, low spot. Okay, so we got some filler here. This is just 
a small amount of U-pole filler and I added a little bit of this plastic honey. Uh, this will thin it out just a little bit, make it a little bit smoother. You want to, you know, fold it in until it's all one uniform color. There's no streaks in it. And this is really smooth, nice and smooth. It's going to kick here really quick. So, so we're going to go from the top of those scratches down. And then up this way. Starting to kick. Okay, we're gonna leave it there, it's done. All right, let's block this body filler with this small block and some 80 grit. Now you could run over this with a DA, but I wanna keep this small. So we're just gonna hand block this. Okay, now we're using some 180 on a round block. Cause there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a contour right here. Draw this flat block. Cover more surface area. All right, now 320. Right now we just want to remove those 180 scratches. You want to primer over 320 grit scratches. Some guys will primer over 180. I don't like to do that because I have seen 180 grit scratches shrink down and show up in the repair. A little bit of 600. We'll sand around the perimeter and then we'll mask this off for some primer. Some of these 180 grit scratches. I'll show you a little trick. We'll use a little guide coat here to show us where the scratches are, especially on this white. Hard to see, but this guide coat gets into those scratches. Looks like they're pretty much all taken care of now. Let's wash it down with some isopropyl alcohol. But we mixed up some 2K urethane primer. This is a four to one to one mixing ratio. Now I did four parts primer, one part activator, and then 0.5 of reducer because I wanted it to be a little bit thicker, but I don't want it to be so thin that it's just a primer surfacer. I want a little bit of build to it. We are using the R500. This gun I use strictly for primer. I have a 1.7 tip in it. I did mask this off and you can see here I folded the paper over so we have a soft edge. We don't want any hard tape lines when we're spraying primer. If I have a soft edge, I can just hit this with 600 outside this edge and we'll remove any overspray that got underneath this paper. Now, as far as the gun setting, I want a controlled amount of primer I put on this. So I'm gonna, I narrowed my fan pattern way down. Um, and here's the fan pattern you can see right there. That's as wide as it is. And then we're gonna put two coats on this. We put one coat on. So we're gonna let this flash off and then we'll put one more coat on. I'm gonna let this dry overnight. I'll work on some other things. And then we'll come back and block this in the morning and paint this tomorrow. Okay, we've got two blocks we're gonna use. This is a firm block with 320 grit sandpaper. We'll block this area with that. We also have a round block, a short round block here we're gonna to use to sand this contour right here. We're gonna sand this with 320 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna put a guide coat over this. And what this is gonna do, once we put this guide coat on, you can see the texture 
in the primer. If there's any scratches, this guide coat's going to fill those scratches and then we'll be able to see when those scratches disappear as we sand this out. If there's any high or low areas, uh, this guide coat's going to expose those areas as well. We'll block this in a kind of an X pattern all over, just blocking it straight. On this, you can see how the texture's disappearing. Now the outside edge perimeter, we're gonna go over with 600. We wanna keep these scratches confined to just around the primered area. And as you can see, it's smoothing out. We still have a couple little low areas here. We'll block these out. This is why we put two coats of primer on it. So we have enough material to block this straight. Okay, now we're gonna feel over this. Make sure it feels good. I don't feel any ridges or anything. I'm gonna block right around here just a little bit more. So I'm feeling the, the edge of this primer to make sure there's no ridges that you can feel. Because if you can feel them, you'll be able to see them after you paint it. That feels perfect. We're gonna go ahead and block this lower area with this round block. Now we wanna go ahead and remove the trim. We need to remove the weather belt. We need to remove the door handle. We need to remove this Cherokee emblem and this lower cladding, this molding here. We wanna remove those so we can get everything underneath those sanded properly before we apply our paint and our clear coat. Okay, for this emblem, I just got a, a piece of uh, fishing line here. Then we'll use this eraser wheel on this drill. This doesn't damage the paint, so it'll remove all that glue very easily. The way we're gonna take off this door handle is pop out this plug fully. But you don't wanna take this all the way out. There we go. There we go, now that comes out. We do is pull this and you slide it back. There we go. We'll take this piece. This is just a seal. Just, just latches in there. We'll pull that out. We want to remove all these scratches, this dusting of primer around this area with 600 grit sandpaper. First, we're going to clean this, clean all the dirt off of it. Um, and then we'll go over and sand this with 600 on an orbital sander. I will probably then go over all the edges by hand with a 600 grit or an 800 grit sanding sponge. You want to make sure all that clear coat has been sanded properly so you have good adhesion for the new clear coat so you don't have any peeling issues down the road. Um, this is the sandpaper we're using. This is Sunmite 800. You could use 600 if you prefer. I'm gonna go over it with the Sunmite 800 grit foam scuff pad. We'll do all the edges with this, those hard to reach areas in this handle. We wanna make sure everything gets sanded properly. We're gonna go over the primer area as well, just slightly. We don't wanna remove a bunch of primer from this. We've got this block straight, but we wanna do the surrounding area. <laughs> I always like to sand around this edge as much as possible so that clear coat can wrap around that edge. You do not want your clear coat to peel. This is 70% isopropyl alcohol. Before we start taping it up, I wanna wash it down real good clean microfiber. I like to use microfibers. You really got to make sure this white is clean. 
There's no smudges in it. I might even run over this with some thinner. Not over the primer, but this is a little thinner. For thinner, you want to use a paper towel because it will take off the color of the microfibers. Now we're getting ready to mask this off. I'm going to go ahead and spray it down with this. This is fast drying degreaser. It's basically wax and grease remover, but it's also a static eliminator. All right, so we're going to use our J tape for foam for inside the doors, inside the jams. I'll open this up first, do this jam, uh, cover those holes, and then we'll tape up the outside and we'll be ready to spray. We're ready to spray our first coat of base. I've got our color mixed up. We've got our air pressure set at 20 PSI. We've got our fan pattern narrowed just a bit. So here's our fan. That's the size of our fan. Our fluid volume is two turns out from closed. So we closed it all the way, two turns out. Now we're just gonna put one coat over this base. I'm not gonna worry about blending it. I just wanna get one coat on it. We're gonna let it flash off. We'll put another coat on. There'll be some overspray that comes out side of this primer area, and that's okay. That's gonna be all part of our blend when we do our final drop coat. I'm controlling the trigger, and that's where I'm gonna let it sit for my first coat. We'll let it flash off, and then we'll apply our second coat. I'm just gonna tack it off real quick. this one more time and then what you'll see me do is I'll pull back about instead of five to six inches away I'll pull back about two more inches and dust a coat on here dust a coat on here it'll be kind of like a X pattern I'll go this way and then I'll go this way One looks good, ready to be cleared. We're gonna lay down some clear coat now. We are using the Aero Pro A610. Uh, fluid volume, we're gonna do three turns out from closed. Here's your fluid volume here. The fan pattern we got wide open. Our air pressure, we're gonna run the air pressure at 31 PSI. That really, on this uh, low volume, low pressure gun, that really atomizes that clear really well. So if you've never sprayed clear coat before, if one thing you don't want to do is you don't, you never want to stop in the middle of a panel while you're pulling the trigger. What happens is when you start spraying clear for the first time, you get a little nervous, you end up moving slow, you come up to something and you slow down and you don't want to do that. You want to have a consistent speed as you're going across the panel. You want to have a consistent distance from the panel at all times. So whether you're going around a bumper, whatever contour you're painting around, you want to have that consistent distance, whatever it may be. I like to spray five to six inches away. You can spray whatever distance you feel comfortable with as long as you adjust your speed accordingly. So if you're going to spray closer, you're going to have to spray a little bit quicker. Okay. Um, so you want a consistent speed, a consistent distance from the panel. You want to make sure you're overlapping your last pass by 80%. So if I make a pass here, overlap that pass by 80% when I make my next pass, okay? So let's go ahead and lay down some clear and you can kind of watch as I do it. So don't be timid when you're spraying the clear. When you stop in the middle of that panel, you want to turn your wrist just a little bit. I let off the trigger a little bit, but that's just me, I've been doing this for years, but even if you just turn your wrist a little bit and then turn it back as you go back into your pass, okay? That's if you're spraying multiple panels and you don't wanna spray stop on an edge. 
you're going to stop in the middle. Now on this panel, we're going to run right off the panel. Right off the panel as we make our passes. One thing about painting in an open garage and not a paint booth, you don't have the amount of light you have in a paint booth. So you need to be able to see, especially on a white vehicle. I'm gonna go a little slower, slower hit this a little harder and slick it out. fish eye right there. This lady keeps her car really, really clean. And when you have someone that really takes care of their car, you know that they're using silicone on that car to wipe down armor, all that type of thing. We've got some kind of contaminant on there, even though I wash this like four or five times and I didn't put a dust coat of clear on before to eliminate that, I should have put a dust coat of clear on just to introduce that clear to the surface. I didn't see it after the first coat because it probably happened in the first coat. But I didn't see it in the first coat. I put the second coat on, which is fine. It looks like it started to cover it on the second coat. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spray a little bit more clear on there. This is how we're going to correct this. We're going to spray a little bit more clear on there. One more coat. We're not going to run it. We're going to let it flash off really good. Now it's going to leave a little dry spray around here, but that's okay because you can wet sand and buff that. Okay. An added coat of clear is going to give me more material to wet sand those out. But these things happen and this is a good opportunity to teach you guys how to correct these things and overcome these kind of issues. Overall, this repair came out beautifully. If you have any questions about the information I shared with you today, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this content and found it valuable, consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. If you want to see how I repair those fish eyes, check out this video now. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.